Hello, welcome to Fire Engineering's Training Minutes. I'm Jason DeFossi from Trenton, Ontario, and this is Dale Zarman from Columbus, Ohio. Building on what we learned in the last uh, series about rapid door access and removal, we're going to continue on with that same evolution and apply those techniques here on the rear door. Dalen? What we're going to do here is we're going to work this door from hinge to latch. We're not going to gap this door, but there's some important precursors to talk about if you're not going to gap this joint. The first key point is that the tips of your blades must get to the back side of the hinge. When you go to close your cutter, if your cutter stalls and does not advance on the material, you're going to have to revert back to a gapping mechanism. So make sure you have just enough pocket behind the hinge to get the tips of your blades placed, and then set your cutter at approximately a 45 degree angle to the B pillar and the door. That allows your cutter blades to advance through the gap between the door and the B pillar without stalling out by contacting the door or by contacting the B pillar. We can also make sure that we take the wiring harness in the same cut as the lower hinge. So we're going to take the top hinge, wiring harness and lower hinge, then we're going to come in with a spreader and we're going to compress the door. As you saw in the last video, especially with new EVs and modern hardened alloys on, on the vehicles, working the latch mechanism can be very problematic. So if we can eliminate working the latch and just flex those joints or use door handles, that can give us more reliable access to the vehicle at times. As soon as the hinges are removed, the spreader is going to come in, clamp the door assembly, and we're going to walk the door out, flexing it on the latch and gaining access to this passenger compartment. We then need to deal with this B-pillar structure. B-pillars on modern EVs and hard vehicles have a ton of kinetic energy in them. That means they're going to respond very violently when we make our cuts. To ensure that this B-pillar goes where we want it to go when we initiate those cuts, we're going to make our lower cut first. The optimal placement for that cut is in the narrow portion of the B-pillar between the latch and the hinge. If you can make a perpendicular cut, that's optimal. That way your tool does not pitch into either passenger compartment and side load on any objects. As soon as the lower cut is completed, the cutter is going to work up to the high B pillar cut and initiate that cut. We always want to make sure that we skin out the cosmetics on the inside of the B pillars to verify that there's no supplemental restraint systems in the areas or the target zones where we're making those cuts. Before we complete this top cut, we're going to use the gasket inside of the door opening to apply a girth hitch to the mid B. That's going to give us a pull point to make sure that the pressure of the B comes out and away from the victims. And we're going to apply a spreader to the lower B pillar assembly and just lightly clamp it. That allows the spreader to apply weight to the B post and remove it from the vehicle. It's important to remember that although these structures on modern vehicles are incredibly hardened and strong, they're also very lightweight. With all of that energy behind them, if you make the top cut first and the B pillar drifts into the passenger compartment, when you make the lower cut, if you're not controlling the B pillar, the B pillar can launch like a projectile into the passenger compartment and potentially injure, injure your occupants. So we're going to step back and we're going to initiate all these movements. So the initial rescuer is coming in to set up. And in the setup process, we're clearing the B pillar of any SRS components. And then he's going to also remove the seatbelt so the seatbelt doesn't travel with the B-pillar when we make those cuts. Once he's cleared and assured that there's nothing uh, present in the B-pillar, he's removing the seatbelt. Now our cut man's going to come in and initiate the hinge cuts. Notice that Aaron is setting up at the 45 degree angle. He's ensuring that both tips of his blades are on the back side of the hinge. And he's going to make sure that the tool travels as soon as he engages the hinge. Aaron now works down to the lower hinge and he ensures that the upper blade grabs the wiring harness and if a hurricane bar is present, it also takes the hurricane bar. As soon as the cuts are complete, the spreader command comes in, gives the door a slight spread to make sure that a hurricane bar is not present and then he's going to go right to a pinch clamping the door and walking the door out and exposing the latch. Two rescuers will operate together in succession. You'll notice that the door is controlled with a safety line and now we're moving in and locating for a cut.
The opening of the B-pillar was a little wide to cut in the ideal location, so Aaron's using a cr clamping motion where he squeezes the B-pillar and compresses slightly to get the cutter into the optimal location. You notice by cutting in that ideal zone between the latch and the lower hinge, it also leaves the neck or the bottom apron of the B-pillar exposed and accessible for secondary pushes if we need them for rams. You'll notice the violent reaction in the tools representing the kinetic energy in the B pillars, which are the reasons we're controlling these bees. Gasket is gonna be removed now from the opening. We're gonna apply a girth to the B pillar, clamping at the bottom to pull out on the B pillar, and the cut is initiated on the upper B pillar. You'll notice that the spreader rescuer is pulling out on the apron of the lower B, pulling that away from the victim. So this illustrated a, a, a pretty decent representation of the strength and the rigidity of modern B pillars. Uh, and you'll notice from this B pillar design, we're not reinforcing the interior of the posts of the pillars anymore. It's layer upon layer upon layer of hardened alloys. So we get that intense overloading of the tool that develops all that energy with all that resistance, and then we get fracturing. And that fracturing is where we get those violent reactions. Very important that rescuers remember to watch their body position, watch their hand control of the tools to make sure they're not loosely holding the tools, good firm grips, and be prepared for your tools to shift radically when you complete those cuts and make those successive fracturing. From that point, once these cuts are made, we want to make sure that we protect our sharp edges before we remove our victims from the vehicles and before rescuers occupy the space. So Jason's going to take over and discuss that. Thank you, Dalen. There are many ways to protect or give edge protection to the vehicles that we're working on. The spirit of why we're doing that is to protect the first responders and their patients. New cars learn cut, they fracture and break, and it is violent. The result of those types of cuts are very, very sharp edges. There are many different things used. We're just demonstrating this particular stuff here today. More of an awareness to how to interact and simply apply. I'd like to thank you very much for watching Fire Engineering's Training Minutes.